Hello, my name is David Sander. I am professor of psychology of emotion and director of the Swiss Center for Affective Sciences at the University of Geneva. The question of what an emotion is has occupied great thinkers such as Aristotle, Descartes and Darwin. Emotions are of great interest to many disciplines, such as obviously psychology, philosophy and neuroscience, but also other disciplines such as sociology, economics, history and even computer sciences. When these disciplines come together to study emotions, we call this new emerging field the field of affective sciences. In this field, we study in particular what an emotion is, what are its functions and how we can measure it. Given the number of disciplines studying emotion and the diversity of the approaches to study emotions, it is not surprising that in fact there are several theories that try to answer what is an emotion. For this introduction, we will use a definition that is commonly used in the affective sciences. It does not consider emotion to be one thing, rather made up of five components. Every emotion consists of these five components in our body. Let's begin with the first component, the evaluation of the event that triggers the emotion. Only events, real or imagined, that we evaluate as important to us can trigger an emotion. In particular, we evaluate the relevance of this event by relating it to our goals, concerns or values. Does it stop us from achieving our goal or does it help us to achieve them? In one case, we will have a negative emotion, in the other, it will be positive. Emotion, therefore, has a triggering event. This component is particularly interesting because it explains why the same event triggers such different emotions in different individuals. The other four components of emotion represent the response to the first component. The peripheral component of emotion is our bodily response that takes place in our peripheral nervous system. Our peripheral nervous system is made up of nerves outside of our brain and our spinal cord. The motor expression component is how our muscles respond. Our face, voice, gestures and posture all express emotion. The third component of the emotional response is called the action tendency. This component changes our relationship with the event. It prepares us to act appropriately for the situation. It can, for instance, urge us to move towards or away from the trigger. The fourth and final component of the emotional response is the feeling, which allows us to become aware of our emotion. Emotion can then be consciously felt. What I find fascinating about the definition of emotion that we just discussed is that it allows us to focus on what is common to all emotions. So it gives us a general definition of emotion. It's not about giving a very specific definition for each separate emotion. To summarize, emotion is a fast process that responds only to events that are very important to us. And the emotion consists of two stages. First, there is the evaluation of the event. And second, there is what we call the emotional response that consists of four components, the bodily reaction, the muscle expression, the action tendency, and the feeling component. Thank you for watching. If you're interested to find out more about emotion, please find helpful links in the description of this video.